I think this is really important when we have a thought that we need to play that out a little bit and and ask like where is this lead if this is leading me because conviction um, if attended to when when we are it's it's almost like the the Holy Spirit is yeah. kind of prompting us like this is this is not what you need to be saying this is not what you need to be doing or don't participate in this activity or don't turn to this as a coping mechanism or whatever but that that conviction is leading us to repentance mm -hmm. or even to prevention of sin like it's it's saying don't do this because if you do this it's going to cause you to get into this sin or it's going to cause you to to feel in a way that is not in keeping with who you really are. Yeah. But that condemnation, if it, if it gets to that place where we're just feeling ultimately condemned, that's also going to lead us somewhere. Mm -hmm. And that condemnation will lead us into shame. And shame, Jim, I, I want you to comment on this. Shame is going to lead us into something to cover up that shame. Because the thing about shame is it it is of the darkness, and when kept in the darkness, it leads us further and further and further away from God's very best to us. It's almost like shame is a driving force to get legitimate needs met in, in an illegitimate way. And there is a plethora, I mean, a just a plethora of addictions and distractions and sin cycles that that people can get into when this happens right it's so true and to go back to which we've done on these podcasts before to go back to genesis 3 you're in genesis 2 they're naked and unashamed genesis 3 all of a sudden their eyes are open uh-oh and they go from naked and unashamed to naked and ashamed and so interesting the way i see it is then in that narrative with adam and eve they grab fig leaves to cover their inadequacies. What was so beautiful and precious before is like now so shameful and so scary. Then they jump over in bushes to hide from, interesting, from themselves, like you can hide from yourself. People try to, they'll disconnect from themselves. Shame is always about disconnection. It is always about disconnection. Interesting that healthy guilt will lead us to connection. If we follow the path, like to Psalm 51, a broken and contrite heart, God won't despise. And so they're over there hiding from themselves, like you can hide from yourself, hiding from each other, and then hiding from God. So what we want in life is connection. We're wired for it. And what we do in shame is we literally disconnect. Once I can disconnect, uh, nature abhors a vacuum. We were literally born, you know, in utero, we're connected with an umbilical cord to mom. So uh, nobody is going to stay disconnected. They will reach out, and it really doesn't matter. It, they will reach out for something. Addictions are usually shame-driven, and yes, trauma-driven. But out of trauma, those messages can be, I'm a loser, I'm unwanted, those shame messages. So I will reach out for something in shame, but usually not something good. And that guilt part is so interesting that both the Bible would teach, I believe, and if you want to call it secular psychology would teach, we need healthy guilt because if we don't, see, everybody has a personal value system. Everybody has a value system. Guilt is that, 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 that whisper in your ear, or maybe someone's yelling in your ear saying, this is incongruent with what you say you believe. And certainly in the Word of God, this is incongruent with what your values are as a Christian. So guilt is a friend saying, stop, don't go down that path. Shame will say, actually do go down this path. And then the last thing I want to say is if you try to fight shame with shame, it's one of the most common things people will do. They're in shame and they fight shame with shame, shame themselves more or watch somebody outside basically tries to shame them as someone's in their own shame. And then you speak even words of condemnation over there. I see that all the time which is either way you doing it or that another person trying to fight shame with shame, that'll spin you down that vortex of shame darkness really quickly. And I think, Jim, what you're saying, and Lisa, what you've said, there's this underlying current or thread, which is um, the difference between isolation, individualization, and darkness to versus, biblically, 
the people of God, the family of God, the presence of the Spirit of God to unite us together to be able to deal with these issues. And so um, I do think one of the, the tragedies of um, part of our cultural context and situation is that we have felt more alone than we've ever felt before, but we have more opportunity to quote unquote connect to each other, you know? Um, and so I just think that's really interesting that one path, uh, this path of shame and condemnation will lead you to self-isolation and self-hatred. Mm -hmm.